Good morning, Northwest. <laughs> yes. Uh, I, I, I thought about saying something about it, but then I thought, no, uh, it, it's so good to bring us to this point. Sherry always buys me an Easter shirt. This is the Easter shirt she bought me Friday for today. So, I didn't have a choice, folks. <laughs> Although, I love it. I do love it, but I probably should be in Hawaii right now, right? Yeah. Um, most, most of you know uh, that my brother-in-law, Mike, passed away yesterday at about noon. Um, we've been praying for him. I just want to say thank you so much for your prayers. And the and reason I, I even say anything about that right now is because when we were taking the Lord's Supper, I remember Mike uh, years and years ago, um, we, we, we were at a worship gathering, and as he was, as we were taking communion together, I mean, he just took a big old honking piece of the bread. You know what I mean? I mean, just, I mean, big. And I think he noticed that I was like, whoa, dude, you know. And, and he told me, though, he told us, he said, you know what? He goes, I don't know why when the bread comes by, we just take a little piece. He goes, I want a lot of Jesus. I am so thankful for Jesus. I want a lot of his body. And that's why, and I heard, so every time from then on, every time we take communion, I always think about that. And even though we have the little bitty wafers in, and I love our containers and stuff like that, but I'm always thinking, Jesus, I want a lot of you. I need a lot of you. Um, Sherry and I were talking on the way over today, and we were talking about how life uh, is, is a journey, but, but the statement that Sherry made, uh, she goes, faith is a journey. And I, I know myself, when we go on trips, it is truly a journey. We, we've been to, uh, what, uh, all but three states, I think, Hawaii, Alaska, and Portland, I mean, Oregon. And uh, so hopefully we'll get Oregon out of the way this summer. But um, we've done a lot of traveling. And I've always used the Rand McNally map book. Now, some of you don't even know what I'm talking about. But the, it, it, was a, it was a big book that you could buy at truck stops and, and stuff like that at, at that time. And I don't know, I never got lost. But here we are now in the age of technology and Google Maps. And, and, uh, and Sherry goes, wow, David, with you, man, every trip is a journey. I mean, you know, because we get lost all the time. With, with Google Maps and, and with the thing talking to me and stuff like that. And, and so our trips are, are up and down and around and this way and that way. And that's the way our faith journey is. Even with these first disciples that had spent over three years with Jesus... They've been with Jesus for three years. They've been, they've been following Him. They've been living with Him. They've been sleeping by His side. They've been sitting at the table, eating with Him every day, three meals a day. They've been watching Him do all of these magnificent miracles. They saw Him walk on water. They saw Him raise uh, their friend and His friend, Lazarus, from the dead after being in the tomb for four days. They witnessed all of these things. But do you realize that on this Sunday, today, nearly 2,000 years ago, there was not a single disciple of Jesus. As far as from Scripture that we can read, there was not a single disciple of Jesus that had any faith that he was going to resurrect. There wasn't a single one. 
Turn over to Mark chapter 16. Terry read uh, in, in, in Matthew chapter 28, and we're going to look at Mark 16 a little bit and John 20. Uh, don't worry, mine is not going to be 90 minutes long, all right? But in Mark chapter 16, and, and this, I, I want this to bless us today. Because in all of our lives, and I know this because there are many of us that get together for different Bible study groups and conversations. And sometimes our faith, and I'm going to tell you, Sherry and I were, you know, sometimes our faith is way up here, and then there's other times our life is, our, our faith is in a nosedive. And there are times that I find myself just like these first disciples, and, and I know that you do too. It was Saturday evening, verse 1 of chapter, of chapter 16 of Mark. It was Saturday evening when the Sabbath ended. Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome, they went out and they purchased burial spices. Underline that. They went out and they purchased burial spices so that they could anoint Jesus' body. Why did they go to the tomb that morning? That first Resurrection Sunday, that first Easter Sunday, why did they get up and they go out and they went out to that tomb? The reason they went out to the tomb is they were expecting to find a dead body, the body of Jesus in the grave, and because they had to rush up the burial on Friday because of the, because of the Sabbath day, his burial wasn't complete. So they went out and they bought all of this oil. They bought all of these spices because they needed to finish the burial of Jesus. Not as a risen Savior. As a friend. And, and it, let's just read on. Because it was very early on Sunday morning, just at sunrise, they went to the tomb. And on the way, they were asking each other, Who's going to roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? But as they arrived, they looked up and they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled aside. When they entered the tomb, now stop and think about this for a second. Why was the stone rolled away from the tomb? Was it to let Jesus out of the grave? And the answer to that is no. It wasn't to let Jesus out of the tomb. It was so that they, the people, could go into the tomb and see that the tomb was empty. Because in verse 5, when they entered the tomb... They saw a young man that was clothed in white robe in a white robe sitting on the right side. The women, they were shocked. But the angel said, Don't be alarmed. You're looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. Well, he isn't here. He is risen from the dead. Look, this is where they laid his body. Now go and tell his disciples, including Peter, that Jesus is going ahead of you to Galilee. And you will see him there just as he told you before he died. And the women, they fled from the tomb, trembling and bewildered. And they said nothing to anyone. Why? Because they were too Frightened. Fear gripped these women. Confusion. They were bewildered. 
They went to the tomb to find a body to finish the burial, and the, and the tomb is empty, just like Jesus had told them over and over and over again. But church, what we see right here in these first disciples, The ones that, man, we think, man, you know what? My faith would be so much stronger if I could have lived when Jesus lived, if I could have walked with Jesus, if I could have lived with Jesus, if I could have seen his miracles. Man, my faith would be so much stronger. But they're no different than we are. And you and I are no different than they are. Because there was no faith in them. Often, in our experiences of life, we're filled with confusion. We're filled with fear. And I want you to stop right now and just think about your life. Think about the last time that, that, that your life was filled with fear. Think about the last time your life was filled with confusion. Man, there's, there's stuff going on in your life and, and maybe with, with neighbors in the neighborhood or, or, or maybe with family members or, or maybe with the loss of a loved one. And there's so many questions. And it just leaves us bewildered. And so many times, our, our faith wavers. But the thing I love about Jesus right here is He meets them right where they are. And Jesus meets us right where we are. And, and I think that's kind of what Aaron and, and Terry's been talking about in our Sunday morning class. You know what? He meets us right where we don't have to wear a mask. We don't have to come in this building with a mask on. We don't have to come in this building pretending to be this strong warrior of faith. Because if not, then, then Jesus, there's no way that Jesus can love me. There's no way that Jesus is going to bless me. But church, I want to tell you something. The resurrection of Jesus says something different. Jesus comes right into our hearts, right into our lives, right into our minds, right into the messes that we deal with. And He meets us right where we are, whether our faith is up here or whether our faith is down here or somewhere in between. He meets us right where we are. Uh, turn over to John chapter 20. I want us to look at a couple of other things here in John chapter 20. Picking up verse 19. John chapter 20, verse 19. So if, if, if that's Sunday evening... That's what John tells. So it's that first resurrection Sunday. So that very first evening after Jesus had been resurrected, the disciples were meeting behind locked doors. You find that unusual? I mean, he's alive. He's been resurrected. yet they're meeting behind locked doors. And John tells us why. Because they were afraid of the Jewish leaders. Hey, if the Jewish leaders, religious leaders, if they killed Jesus, They may want to kill us also. They may want to kill his followers. And so they're afraid. 
and they're hiding. And the door's locked. But suddenly, Jesus was standing there among them. Peace be with you, Jesus said. And as he spoke, he showed them the wounds in his hands and at his side. And they were filled with joy when they saw the Lord. And again he said, Peace be with you. And as the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And then he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, they are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. The door was locked. And just like the stone that was over the tomb that was not removed so Jesus could go out, he had already gone out when the angel moved the stone. And just like that, here his, his disciples, they're hiding behind locked doors. The doors are locked. They're in hiding. And the next thing they know, boom, here's Jesus standing right here in the middle of us. And that's so encouraging to me because my Jesus, there is no physical barrier that can ever keep Jesus from us. Amen? Nothing. Nothing. I think about Judy, I think about those prisoners that, that we're doing the correspondence courses with. And hopefully we're going to be able to go in and have Bible study, physical Bible studies in the prison. Those prison walls cannot keep Jesus away from them. There is no physical obstacle that can keep Jesus out. And I love this because John tells us that Jesus was, there he was, just standing right among them. Jesus was not standing above them. Jesus was not standing back from them. But Jesus was standing right in the middle of them. That's the way he is with us. You know, just like he promised in John chapter 14 where he talked to them about, he told them, he said, hey guys, this is going... I mean, Jesus was very uh, on, on target. He was very distinct when he said, here's what's going to happen when we get to Jerusalem. As a matter of fact, he was telling them all of that stuff in John chapter 14 the day that he was uh, actually arrested. But he's telling them ahead of time, here's what's going to happen. But when this happens, I want you to know that you're never going to be by yourself. I'm not going to leave you as orphans. I'm not going to leave you to fend for yourselves. I will always be with you. They had no clue what he was talking about. But he keeps, he keeps his word. He keeps his promises. And here he was. Just like he was with them, he's with us. He's with my sister today. I got up this morning thinking, you know, this is the first day of a new normal for my sister. And many of you have already experienced this with your, with your mates that have lost a husband or a wife. She's not, she's not alone. Jesus, through the Holy Spirit, is right there with her. And I love the first words out of Jesus' mouth. 
again, I mean, he told them very specifically, here's what's going to happen when we get to Jerusalem. And boom, everything was happening just like he had described it was going to happen. And yet when Jesus got arrested, where did his disciples go? Most of them skedaddled. Matter of fact, the only ones that were at the cross were, were the women and John. And Peter was there for a little while around the fire. He kind of followed at a distance, but we know what happened to Peter. So you would almost think, you know what, when Jesus saw them, and this is, this is what I want us to listen very closely because there's some of us sitting in this room today that sometimes we feel like that our faith is short. Our faith falters. And so, you know what? I've got to try harder. I've got to do better so that Jesus will accept me, so that Jesus will love me, so that Jesus will bless me, so that Jesus will be with me. We've had this conversation, some of us, just this last week. My faith. I've got to have better faith. I've got to be stronger. I got to, I got to, I got to. And I love the fact that when Jesus, when he, when he appeared to them in that locked room, He didn't go, hey guys, what are you doing? What are you doing hiding out? What are you doing behind a locked door? Where's your faith? Where's your trust? Why, why are you so afraid? Didn't you watch? Didn't you listen when we were together before the crucifixion? What are you doing? Where were you at? Why weren't you at the tomb this morning celebrating my resurrection? But you know what? Jesus didn't do any of that. Jesus didn't put them on a guilt trip. Jesus didn't reprimand them. Jesus didn't fuss at them. Jesus looked at them and he said these words, Peace be with you. That's my Jesus. That's our Jesus. And I just want to say to us today, on this Resurrection Sunday, no matter where you are right now today on your faith journey, because it is a journey, there's going to be a lot of ups, a lot of downs. And today some of you may be struggling. You know, as Terry was reading Scripture and, 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 and sharing thoughts from, from the Scripture, he was talking about being mighty. And that, and that is the story. Man, you know what? The power that resurrected Jesus from the dead is the power that lives in us. Did you feel that power every second of every day this past week? If you did, praise God. Because I didn't. But Jesus still loved me. And he didn't leave me. And he came to me at those moments of lowly, lowness in my life this week. And he didn't put me on a guilt trip. He said, David, peace be with you. And he just washes us in his peace. It's the shalom peace from the Old Testament. 
the Hebrew word shalom. It is peace in the middle of a storm. That's how Jesus is. The circumstances may not change. The situation may not change. I know for my sister today, missing Mike, guess what? That's not going to change. He's gone. Matter of fact, he was so ready to see Jesus. Said it so many times. And my sister said it too. She goes, you know what? I mean, I'm excited for him. But it took her over an hour to let us siblings know through uh, messaging that he had passed. And, and I sat there and I thought about that for a little bit. I don't think she, I don't think she could get it out. I know when, it, when, when I read the words, knowing that this was going to be soon, I mean, it hit me like a ton of bricks. It took all the breath out of me. I knew it was going to come, but it does that. Isn't that how death comes? But you know what? Jesus has overcome the grave. He has overcome death. And he says to us, right where we are today, peace be to you. Even in the storms of our life, even no matter what's going on, whatever it is that's causing you to be bewildered, to be confused, whatever, Jesus says, I want you to come to me just as you are. You don't have to be this superman or this wonder woman of faith. Just come. Many times we don't have an invitation song. But Aaron and I thought today would be a good day to have an invitation song. And I just want to say to you, because as I look in your faces, most of us have been baptized believers in Jesus. That doesn't mean that we have, that we have it all together. We, we walk by faith, not by sight, but sometimes our faith gets rocky. And so maybe right now you're struggling, and you're thinking, wait a minute, I'm supposed to be stronger than this. I'm supposed to be better than this. Let Jesus come to you right where you are right now. And if you would like someone to pray with you, if you'll just come. And I just want to say to some of our sisters, Kristen, uh, Katie, others, if a sister comes, would you come and pray with them? You can talk to a, a, a sister. If brothers come, some of our brothers, Terry, Alan, different ones, come up, pray with them. Man, just, just come. That's what this time is all, just as you are. And maybe you've never given your life to Jesus Christ. You want to experience the resurrection He experienced? That's what He tells us baptism is. Man, we, we, we're, we're put underneath the water. And we're buried with Him in baptism. Our old self is gone. And man, you know what? I come up out of that water... Just like Jesus came out of the grave, I have been resurrected. I have new life. I am a new person. With His Holy Spirit. Does that mean that I'm always going to be gun-ho? No. But I'm always in Christ, and He has always protected me. So often, I think, in our churches, we think, oh, before you can be baptized, you need to take care of this, you need to take care of that. Hey, you need to, you need to put, quit doing that, and quit doing, you know. We, we, you know trying to, I'm telling you, we, we, we put the cart before the horse. Just come as you are. Be baptized in the cross.